joining us now, Congressman uh, James French Hill, Republican Congressman uh, from Arkansas, Vice Chair of the House Financial Services Committee. It's good to have you. Good to be with you. Thanks for the invite. Uh, what about the idea uh, of taking this to Wall Street? Do you think that's a, a good venue uh, to, to highlight what's going on, especially may, maybe after what's happened in the last month or two? The debt's going to be a lot more serious than that. Well, Speaker McCarthy is celebrating 100 days uh, in the majority today by coming to the New York Stock Exchange, as President Reagan did back in 1985, to talk about the threats of an unsustainable budget deficit, what ought to be done about it. And so I think he's going to make the point, look, we've been asking since February 1st for meetings uh, with the president to talk about mutually how we could raise the debt ceiling. And that hadn't gone very well. Uh, we've written him a letter. Speakers called him, but he, we have not met. So the mission today is to lay out what would be House Republicans' plan to raise the debt ceiling, and he's chosen the New York Stock Exchange as the venue. That's been 75 days, I think, since, yeah, since right. he spoke. Uh, so he's out on, you know, President Biden's off on the uh, Ancestry.com tour in Ireland, and we've been trying to come up with a set of uh, consensus views on how to raise the debt ceiling inside the Republican caucus and bring that to uh, the American people. What leverage does... Uh, Speaker McCarthy have is, is that what he's trying to do? That, that's been pointed out that, and, and it might be unfortunate if, if you wish we could do something about the debt, but uh, at, at this point, the president can just say, I want a clean raise, and if we were to default or something horrible, it's going to be blamed on yeah. Republicans. So, what leverage? Well, I don't you see. Have. Yeah, I don't see any any success by Chuck Schumer to do a clean debt ceiling raise. I don't think the senators support that per se. He hasn't gotten that vote across the Senate floor. So uh, House Republicans want some improvements. And eleven times in our history, we've gotten spending cut deals and spending reforms by using the debt ceiling as a way to do that. And that's a constructive way to to do it. Versus that's, how many clean debt ceiling raises? Oh gosh, I'm sure there've been a bunch of short-term clean debt ceiling raises over more the years. Than eleven, probably. Yeah. But my point is that it is a leverage point to try to get both parties to come together and do some spending reforms. We want to cut the rate of growth in spending. We want to save taxpayers money. And we want to have a pro-growth approach uh, by passing H.R. 1, which is our energy bill. We want to add the RAINS Act. We want to encourage... See, Congressman, uh, this is where it gets... It, it's not yeah. just about cutting the budget deficit. It's about getting right. everything else that anybody wants to, to negotiate in there. And that's where... That's it, it, a lot more. That's, yeah, well, this is also why I don't think it's right to say, well, where's your budget versus the debt ceiling? I mean, that is the okay, distinction, but, because you have a chance to talk about structural reforms in a debt ceiling debate as opposed to just the spending number. And I think Americans are tired of inflation, so we but, want to offer supply side. But when you start talking about side. energy and ramming a bunch of other stuff into this, I mean, well, that's it's not it ramming it. It's things we think that with lower inflation, these are Republican ideas for the president's consideration to lower inflation, uh, to make the economy more effective as to hiring workers. We're short workers. Every every employer in my district says they can't find the help they need, even under t today's conditions, and then save money, like repealing what's left of appropriated but unspent COVID money. And, yes, we do propose uh, to try to cut some of the spending Joe Biden's done, block the student loan write-off, which I don't think is constitutional, which I don't think uh, is the right thing to do policy-wise. Were you surprised by the court ruling on this, where the court said basically let it go? I mean, I was, I was actually surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised by it, but I still, for it, that's pretty I still think at the end of the day that is a way beyond executive authority to do that, you, the scope and size of it.